So, hello everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, my name is Kamel Vavra and I will be speaking about compromise keys. This is not something that we do here in Kiwi, <laughs> but, and it's not about tokens and or secrets, and it's a little bit of a surprise for you. So I am from application security team, uh, and I am interested in uh, like offensive web security and always see searching uh, new things, uh, how to compromise something or how to test something. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter or read some of my articles on my personal blog. And please raise your hand if you saw Mr. Robot. Okay, so nearly everyone. Uh, I kind of saw it a couple of months ago because it became available on Netflix. And in five, uh, fifth episode, uh, there was this scene, uh, not sure if you remember, but Elliot was trying to hack into the police station and Darlene uh, kind of helped him distribute uh, the USB, uh, USB keys uh, around the parking lot. And I was watching this again and again and was thinking like, what the fuck? Like, does it really work? Can you do this in the real world? And it got me thinking that I can probably try. And if I will hack police station, maybe even better. So the agenda uh, is, does this really work? And is there some ethical way how I can do that? And yeah, we are in Brno and I was like, okay, I probably can do this uh, here at work or maybe I could, but it will be more fun if I will do it in Brno. And it was only for education purposes because education is always, always fun. So I decided to try it. And <laughs> I kind of was looking for e-shops and I was searching for the cheapest option. And I actually bought them uh, from Alza, but the pink one was the cheapest one. So I went with, uh, with 10, uh, 10 <laughs> pink USB flash disk. And actually I bought uh, 11 of them because I wanted to have one spare just for the testing. And then after I had them at home, they were there were pretty fast and I was thinking, okay, but the scene that I showed you uh, previously, uh, nobody, nobody will fall for this and it's too obvious. And who, the, who will like uh, pick up pink flash disk in the parking lot? So, I was looking uh, how to make it more valuable and I, was, uh, I wanted to buy, buy a lot of keys. But keys are expensive. Uh, I visited a <laughs> uh, couple of stores and uh, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. So I remember that we have this portal called Aukro when you can uh, buy a lot of things uh, really cheap. And I was like looking every day uh, if someone is, is selling some, uh, some old keys or something. And yeah, one day someone did uh, post this. So I immediately uh, like uh, bought it, uh, won the uh, auction. But they, they came after a couple of days uh, because check office uh, was slow. And yeah. They were really cheap, but they were also really old and dirty and rusty. And I was like, okay, this wasn't gonna work. So I started Googling how to make them look like new. <laughs> and yeah, you will find everything on Google. It's part of our work to Google everything. So I did follow some YouTubers that told me uh, to use apple cider vinegar or Coca-Cola or something. And yes, I left them in the, in the mix that I prepared for a couple of days. And yeah, you can see like uh, they are shiny and uh, look uh, uh, as good as new. So I was really, really happy with the, with the result. But I was like, okay, but now I have like a uh, USB disk or flash disk and I have a ton of keys, but how are you gonna attach them? 
so I spent days and weeks. <laughs> uh, I spent like a lot of days or weeks looking on the outcry if someone will be selling keyings. And eventually, I don't know why, but someone uh, started selling them. <laughs> so I was like, okay, it's really, really cool. I can just order them and I have uh, next, uh, next uh, piece of the puzzle. And yeah, the shipping was not great and it took a lot of time to get it delivered. But yeah, I got uh, the key rings. And finally, uh, everything started working better and better. But yeah, who does keys without any nice keychain, like any gadget or something? So I started looking on Aukro if someone is, <laughs> if someone is selling some nice, uh, cheap uh, keychains, and nobody did. And I was like, okay, so screw it. Uh, I don't will be delivering this talk because I don't have the components to do it. But I started checking eShops and more CZ uh, had the, like, uh, one day they did a really, really great discount for, uh, for a lot of keychains. So thank you, uh, whoever uh, did it, this uh, from the mall. And I, I ordered <laughs> kind of all, uh, everything that they had in stock. <laughs> and yeah, it looked nice. It's, it's like if you pair it with the pink USB disk, it will look even better. And it was really cheap. But I still needed to buy the uh, line art because I have kind of everything that I need, but I still need to attach all of it together. So yeah, I went back to Elcro and I started uh, looking for, uh, for someone uh, selling this. And yeah, one lucky day, someone uh, did uh, this auction. I kind of needed just 10 of them, but they were selling 18, but I was like, okay, it's really cheap. Uh, and actually the shipping cost was same amount. Uh, but yeah, I did order them. And this was basically the hardest part of the research. Like how I am going, going to attach, attach them. Because I'm not sure if you ever tried, but it's really hard to attach the USB, the flash drive uh, to these things. <laughs> so yeah, this was definitely the hardest part of the, of the research to kind of attach them. And I eventually got really skilled on it, so I can probably do it professionally. Uh, <laughs> it's not that hard, like if you try hard enough. So yeah, this is the end result. Uh, some of them are blue, but whatever. Uh, and yeah, the total cost was about $200. Uh, so not great, not terrible. And yeah, it took about three weeks. That's a lie because it took a really long time to order everything. And yeah, what do you think? So I think that it looks nice. So I had everything, but I was like, okay, but what to do next? I don't do programming, I don't do malware, I don't know uh, how to poison the flash drive to deliver some, uh, some, some kind of uh, beacon or something that will call me uh, to my server and actually verify that someone did plug it in into the computer. So I started Googling again and the, there is some really great service called Canary Tokens. It's free service. Uh, it's really simple. You just visit the website and you can generate some token. And this is for the blue team. This is actually the aim of the company is to do kind of honeypot st style. So you will generate uh, like some tokens. Uh, which can be a uh, Microsoft Word document, it can be Kubernetes config, v VPN config, it could even be some AWS key. And if someone will hack the company and copy some GitLab repository or something and start uh, opening the documents or start uh, verifying that uh, the key works, uh, the Canary Token service uh, will actually send you notification that someone actually visit or use the token. And yeah, they have nice documentation that will tell you uh, how you can get most of it from the service. 
and they will basically help you to hide the tokens in the network to increase the likelihood of the attacker uh, not knowing that it's honeypot and that they will use it. And this is kind of good. I can use it. I don't need to program anything. And uh, it's a reputable company. Uh, they are doing this for years. They even had the enterprise version when uh, you get uh, a lot of uh, benefits. And yeah, there you can see the tokens that you can generate. Uh, HTTP token is the basic one. Uh, they will generate some URL. And if someone will visit the URL, uh, it will send you the email on workbook, some notification. Uh, you can even do QR code, so if someone will scan it, uh, it will send you the email. And yeah, you have a lot of options, and if you actually pay for the service, uh, you will get a ton, ton of more. Uh, so this is how it looks. You will generate the token, it's the web token, and uh, it will generate some URL. Uh, you can include it as the image in the HTML, and you have some ideas how to use it. And you can uh, you can uh, manage the token, so you can uh, turn on or off email notifications or webhook or something. You can down download it. Then you have the history how many times someone did visit uh, that URL. And actually, you can see some incident list, which is basic history. And you, you can see the date, uh, IP address. Uh, this was the DNS token, which means that someone tried to resolve some of the subdomain. And you will actually get the IP of the DNS, uh, DNS resolver. And yeah, you can export it and do some data analysis or it or anything you want. So I kind of didn't want to just use the public service because I wanted to learn something and try to deploy it myself on my own server and do a couple of things differently. So I decided to go with the Docker version. And it's really simple. Uh, you have the front end, you have the back end. And yeah, these are the configs that you need to do. So you need to buy some domain, uh, or you don't need to, but I will recommend to buy a new uh, new host or new domain. So you will set the domain that you will be using. Uh, for if you want to hide the token and the PDF document, you need to use another one. Uh, but you don't need to use the PDF. Uh, and then for you can actually, if you look into administration panel, you can see all the incident on the map. Uh, so you have the nice overview of where the person uh, who did uh, plug in the USB disk lives. And yeah, this was the second hardest part because you need to have Google API key for the maps. And it's not free. You need to have the Google account. You need to uh, generate it in the GCP, in the cloud and they will charge you for, uh, for usage. Or you can use uh, one for free. But I kind of didn't want to uh, use my personal account and register and uh, do all of this. And yeah, this is security meetup, right? So I started uh, reverse engineering all the Android application available and uh, checking if the Google API key that they are using in the, in the Android application actually works. Because you can restrict it, right? Uh, you have some application, they are using the API key, and you can say only this origin, only this, uh, this application or this website can use the key. But sometimes companies uh, don't do the restriction properly, and you can still use them. So I started like downloading all the APK, uh, APKs from the, uh, from the Google Store and traversing it and using the API key. And it took me days because nobody was using, uh, everyone was using the key correctly or with the correct permissions. And one day I downloaded the official Google Map uh, application and one API key hard coded in that application uh, didn't have any restriction. So for, the exam for this demo, I was using the API key uh, from, from Google for free. 
and yeah, then you can uh, just specify the DNS. And on the backend, you can use some uh, service for sending sending the emails. So I did use Mailgun, uh, and you can set uh, how the sender will look, what will be the subject, the message, and that's basically it. Uh, then you can just run uh, the Docker and deploy the application. Uh, Doing the DNS properly was kind of difficult because there is always something wrong with, with DNS. So you can actually see what I did. Uh, I bought the domain, which was called flashdiskdharma.cz, and I did the e record for the canary. Uh, this is basically the canary token that someone will, uh, will trip or use. Then you have the flashdiskdharma, which is the main website. Uh, uh, that doesn't do anything special. Then I had the webhook. I actually wrote the Cloudflare uh, worker to send me the webhook to the Telegram. So in case the mail will go down or someone will try to, uh, because you are paying for the mail gun, right, for sending the emails. So if someone uh, will start brute forcing the tokens, they will be sending me thousands of emails. So the webhook was kind of the backup if something goes down or wrong with the emails. And yes, a couple of, uh, couple of uh, another DNS records. Then the most in the better part is that I needed to prepare the file system on the, on the USB, on the flash drive. Uh, so you can see here how it kind of looked. Uh, because I did buy the pink uh, USB drives, I was like, okay, I need some photo and I will probably use some, uh, some girl or something. So I actually used the artificial, artificial intelligence to generate, uh, generate the images for me. So this person doesn't exist, but it looks like so. And I use, for each uh, USB uh, drive, I did use four tokens. Uh, one was the, in the desktop.ini, uh, in the My Documents folder. And one was in the school folder, folder in the Word and Excel document. And there was also the web folder uh, with the, just the index HTML, uh, which will trigger the, uh, the web token. And to look at nice, I did the folder with cats, uh, where it was like nice, nice pictures of the cats, because everyone loved love them. And yeah, so for AI, I use this free website. Uh, the first one will generate the picture or the photo of the person and uh, some artwork and uh, this one will generate the pictures of the cats. So I didn't work in a GDPR, everything, uh, the person didn't exist. And regarding the Windows directory token, uh, is the desktop in it. It was actually in the uh, My Documents folder. And Windows have this nice uh, feature when uh, you can use the desktop.ini file to set the icon for the file or the folder. And you can actually, uh, the icon could be on the remote server, right? So this, this is the desktop.ini uh, file. And for the My Documents folder, the icon is being downloaded from my website. And I can see the username of the person or you can, see, uh, you can see the name of the computer and stuff like that. So in case, in case someone will plug, uh, plug it in in the computer and they are using Windows, uh, I will immediately get the token uh, because they try to load the icon of the folder. And if they will start messing around and open uh, some document, uh, it will send another token and uh, that's it. And because I wanted to make real, uh, I this this really terrible base script, uh, which will basically iterate over each file and folder uh, in the USB drive, and will change the metadata. So if you will plug in uh, the USB, and you will be checking where the files were created or modified, uh, everything was set uh, for uh, to three years in the past. So basically the flash drive did look uh, as someone was using it for three years. 
And I bought a domain flashdiskdharma.cz. It's still live. You can, uh, you can read the message there. And I basically said that I am doing kind of social experiment and that the person that found the USB drive uh, like won it. So there is like congratulations, you can keep the flash disk and consider this as a gift from me. And yet I tried, I tried to explain everything because if police will start investigating or someone will try to kind of reverse engineer what is happening, uh, they have my email address here and they can just uh, ping me and I will, I, will, uh, I will tell them what this is about. So I actually tried to do it in the most possible ethical way. And yeah, so I did prepare everything and then uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a really nice trip around the Brno and because I'm being recorded so I actually accidentally lost all of them. I didn't <laughs> plan them anywhere. And yeah, so you could probably see or found some of them, but yeah, I kind of lost them, but I did lose them on the weekend because that way I could kind of minimize, uh, minimize the chance that someone will found one of these on the way to work and they will plug it in the work computer and cause some security incident. So I was like, okay, it's weekend, so there is uh, zero chance that someone will probably do this at work. So at least that was nice. And actually I was walking around the Brno on a nice Sunday. And when I was like in the half of the trip, so I lost just half of them, I did receive, receive the first webhook, right? So it was like one hour that someone did actually find one of these run home and immediately plug it in in the computer. And you can see that it was the, like they did uh, the folder, uh, right? It's a folder. So this person uh, was brow browsing all the folders on the USB drive. So they did trip the token four times because every time they opened some folder and went back, they did uh, trigger the token but they didn't open any files. They just went through everything and that's it. I didn't get any, any webhook from them anymore. Yeah, and the second one was on Monday. So someone probably did found it on the weekend and they was like, okay, I won't plug it in my computer, but I can try tomorrow at work. <laughs> so yeah, Monday morning and I received another webhook. And in this case, uh, it was the DNS token. And you can see, oh, this is the one from Sunday. You can see it's Windows directory. And yeah, you can see someone did trigger it. And this is the one from Monday. Oh, sorry, this is still, oh, yeah, I didn't show I actually didn't show the one from Monday, but this is how it looks with the, with the folder. So you can have uh, like the time, you can have the ID of the token, you can see some reminder, you can see the IP that I should probably deduct. But, oh, actually no, because there is the map. And because it was DNS, uh, DNS request, you don't actually see the IP uh, of, the, of the user or the victim. Uh, you just see IP of the DNS, uh, the DNS server. So you can see that the, the person was uh, going through the flash drive. They were sending the tokens like crazy. And they were using uh, both uh, Google and Cloudflare DNS. So half of, the, half of the request came from Google and half of them from, from Cloudflare. And the second, second webhook that I did receive, it was on Monday. And it was someone that was probably not using Windows because they didn't trigger the Windows folder one. But they looked on everything on that, uh, on that flash drive and actually they just opened the Excel file. I don't know what they were looking for, maybe some password or something, but the only interesting thing was the, was the Excel file. Um, yeah. 
So the question is what, what you do. If you like, were walking, walking around the Brno and you saw the keys uh, lying, uh, lying somewhere uh, on some train station or some, uh, some pathway, I mean, there could be the malware. You could definitely, uh, you definitely shouldn't do this at work and even at home. Because if you Google or if you know the USB rubber ducky, uh, it's device uh, that can simulate the keyboard. And actually, if you are not looking, it will start typing, uh, typing on your com computer. And if you, are, if you are using Windows, the desktop uh, in it, it's nice take. Uh, that you could look how to prevent that. And they are also devices called killer USB, which could literally uh, burn, burn your comp computer down. And yeah, it's not illegal to access someone's data, right? So if you found my flash disk, you can't actually start looking at the files and opening all, all the documents. Uh, yeah, so that was a little bit of my social experiment, and thank you for attention. I have a question. Oh. If you, exactly you, find a USB stick somewhere on a, oh. on a parking lot, wouldn't you be more interested than anyone else what's inside? some kind of uh, trap? I mean, definitely. There could be like Bitcoin wallet with tens of millions. <laughs> <laughs> in what way you would use it? Holding shift to, you know, uh, restrict auto exec bus from the flash drive or you would use company provided hardware so your isn't affected or? I mean, I think that I on, uh, yeah, the question was uh, if I will found the keys or the flash drive on the street, what I would do. And I think that the most ethical way is just to walk away and don't pick it up. But yeah, if you really wanted to look at the files, uh, I don't have any recommendation for that because. It was meant to you personally because I think you would be actually interested. I mean, I'm still being recorded. But <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think that the, the ethical way is just walk away. And because even if you will call the police that you find the keys and you want to return to them, and they will actually go to the police station and plug it in, <laughs> uh, you actually help me to compromise the police station. <laughs> or, I mean, the best way is probably let them be and just walk away and don't try anything. Oh, yeah, another question. Oh, uh, yeah, the question, oh, uh, yeah. The question is if I did randomize the file names. Yeah, because I, oh. I, I, I saw that there were just one, two, three, four, five, so. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't do that. I just randomized, uh, metadata. yeah, just the metadata and I did randomize. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, so I just randomized basically the doc and XLS, so win, uh, the Word and Excel documents. And that was the only thing uh, which did have the random name. That kind of looks suspicious if you open the folder I mean, and there are just numbers. I mean, it is, but one person did open the Excel one. I don't know why. But yeah, it's really suspicious. I. I kind of wanted to write some tool that will generate everything for you. That was the main idea to kind of open source it. So, but I kind of didn't do it in the end. But I was actually thinking about that I will just open source the tool that you will plug in the flight disk and it will uh, prepare everything for you. And in that case, I would probably do every, 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 each of them randomized and different. Okay, got it, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yep. So just two more books you have? I mean, two 
to um, oh. back from all 10 USBs? In, yeah, oh. I mean, that's not really the trade though. Oh, yeah, the question was uh, that if I only get the two hits from two different flash drives, and yeah, one, one of them was uh, on Saturday, one on Monday, or Sunday, Monday. And I was kind of thinking about it because when I was going, when I, well, I was going around the burner and losing them accidentally, uh, I was like, okay, this is kind of boring. And even if I will get a one, it will be success. And actually, it take one hour to get the first one. And the, the second one, it was just a little bit surprise for me that it took like uh, two days. And I mean, it's still like 20% success. So I'm not sure if it's good or not. I think that we are all ethical security guys here, or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that the zero would be success. Because if I want to educate, educate like people, uh, I would really like to see no, no, no one actually did trigger any of the web hooks. So it's not success for me, but it's still sad that people fell for, fell for it. Yep, another question. Uh, yeah, uh, the question was if antivirus could block uh, block pink or the token. And yeah, I actually didn't uh, didn't test the, any antivirus. Uh, but I was testing different kind of the token that I can use. I really wanted to use the custom exe or custom binary. And the way they are doing it, you can upload any binary, and the token is actually in the uh, in the certificate that the binary was signed with. So in the Windows, if you go to the uh, like properties of the binary and you will look up the certificate, uh, it will trigger the token. But this one was actually being blocked, and you can actually the, do the adopt PDF uh, token. But it depends on the version of the of the PDF that you have. If you have old version, it will send the ping, it will send the webhook. If you have the uh, the latest version of Adobe, it will ask you uh, if you want want to communicate with this domain when you are opening the document. But yeah, I definitely think that some uh, the desktop in a uh, some sane antivirus should be blocking that because there is no reason to load the icon of the folder from some random website that was registered a week ago. So yeah, it's possible that more people did plug it in, but the antivirus did uh, block, uh, block the token from being sent. I honestly don't know. I didn't test any antivirus. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, did you maybe try to walk the path again, like after one week? Uh, basically to see if the keys were taken or not. There was the key accident that we lost. Oh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I, say, I mean, it, it would be interesting to see what people oh. do when they see the keys on the, with the flash drive on the street. If they like leave it there for oh. a week or they will pick it up. I mean, I kind of did. Uh, I did uh, visit some of the location and the keys was, uh, weren't there. Um, but I didn't mark uh, all the spots, so I don't even remember. Uh, when I lost them. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about it, that it would be really nice to attach some GPS uh, locator on the keychain as well, but they are still expensive. So yeah, it would be much better to, uh, to mark the location and use some tracker. And actually, you don't need to trigger the, the token. You just will see that someone is walking Someone did pick up the keys and someone is walking with them. So maybe after a couple of years when the GPS locator will be uh, cheap selling on Aukro, I will probably try this again and do it even better. Oh, uh, yeah, or I can just start dropping uh, uh, smartphones around the burner. <laughs> okay, when, when you start dropping iPhones, tell us. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's going to be so Oh, yeah. But nice, nice idea. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Yep. What happens to the rest of the blue chips? Do you still have them? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can put them on Amkara tomorrow and you can buy it from me. <laughs> oh, yeah, the question was what did happen to the liners and the blue ones. So I still have eight of them. Sorry, I didn't bring them here, but yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that's it's all. Yes.